Hello there, I'm Agent Lee from The Book Agents and today I have another favourite to share with you. It is The Perks of Being a Wallflower from Stephen Chbosky. Not sure how to spell this one but I'm sure you have read this book already or you've heard about it. It is a young troubled little man called Charlie, well man, he's a boy yet. and. Um, I cannot give you away the reason why he's troubled because I will tell you half the story already and um, he's quite sensitive, he has his heart on his sleeve and he has really peculiar way to, to see the world and um, he's really attentive, he notices things about other people that most are blind to and um, yeah I'm just gonna read you what it's about on the back and maybe one two pages if you if you'd like to stick with me and hear it through. I walk around the school hallways and I look at the people. I look at the teachers and wonder why they're here. Not in a mean way, in a curious way. It's like looking at all the students and wondering who's had their heart broken that day or wondering who did the heartbreaking and wondering why. Charlie is a freshman and while he's not the biggest geek in the school, he is by no means popular, shy, introspective, intelligent, beyond his years, yet socially awkward. He is a wallflower, caught between trying to live his life and trying to run from it. Charlie is attempting to navigate his way through uncharted territory. The world of first dates and mixtapes, family, dramas and new friends, the world of sex and drugs and the Rocky Horror Picture Show, when all one requires is that perfect song on their perfect drive to feel infinite. But Charlie can't stay on the sideline forever. Standing on the fringes of life offers a unique perspective, but there comes a time to see what it looks like from the dance floor. And there's also um, a little note. The Perks of Being a Wallflower is a deeply affecting coming-of-age story that will spirit you back to those wild and poignant roller coaster days known as growing up. This is also how it looks from the back. So, I'm also going to read you one, two, one or two pages. Part 1 August 25th of 1991 Dear friend, I am writing to you because she said you listen and understand and didn't try to sleep with that person at that party, even tough you could have. Please don't try to figure out who she is because you might figure out who I am and I really don't want you to do that. I will call I will call people by different names or generic names because I don't want you to find me. I didn't enclose a return address for the same reason. I mean nothing, I mean nothing bad by this, honest. I just need to know that someone, that someone out there listens and understands and doesn't try to sleep with people even if they could have. I need to know that these people exist. I think you, of all people, would understand, would understand that because I think you, of all the people, are alive and appreciate what that means. At least I hope you do, because other people look to you for strength and friendship, and it's that simple. At least that's what I've heard. So, this is my life, and I want you to know, and I want you to know that I am both happy and sad, 
and I'm still trying to figure out how that could be. I tried to think of my family as a reason for me being this way, especially after my friend Michael stopped going, stopped going to school one day last spring and we heard Mrs. Vaughan's voice on the loudspeaker. Boys and girls, I regret to inform you that one of our students has passed on. We will hold a memorial service for Michael Dobson during assembly this Friday. I don't know how new travels around school and why it is very often right. Maybe it was in the lunchroom. It's hard to remember. But Dave with the awkward glasses had hard to remember. Oh no, wait. <laughs> But Dave with the awkward glasses told us that Michael killed himself. His mom played bridge with one of Michael's neighbors and they heard the gunshot. I don't really remember much of what happened after. That except that my older brother came to Mr. Vaughn's office in my middle school and told me to stop crying. Then. He put his arm around my shoulder and told me to get it out of my system before Dad came home. We then, we then went to eat french fries at McDonald's and he taught me how to play pinball. He even made a joke that because of me he got to skip an afternoon of school and asked me if I wanted to help him work on his Camaro. I guess I was pretty messy because he never let me work on his Camaro before. At the guidance council sessions, they asked the few of us who actually knew or liked Michael to say a few words. I think they were afraid that some of us would try to kill ourselves or something, because they looked very tense, and one of them kept touching his beard. Bridget, who is crazy, said that sometimes she thought about suicide when commercial come on during TV. She was sincere and this puzzled the guidance counsellor. Carl, who is nice to everyone, said that he felt very sad he could never kill himself because it is a sin. So, what do you think so far? And um, now, what we sometimes do is we play a little bit of music for you in the background, so tell us what you think. Do you like it? Or do you think it bothers with the reading and listening so let us know we always like to hear what you have to say and if you want to also if you have a book that you really like why don't you give us a tip maybe it's the next book i'm gonna review so thank you for listening have a good day bye